Hello everybody, welcome back to Mantle Farm for another one of our apiary inspection videos here on YouTube with myself Josh and our experienced beekeeper Roger. We'll take a look through our main hives this week to see what's going on and to see whether we've got any manipulations to do. Don't forget if you have any questions for myself or Roger then leave them in the comments below. Right, okay, so here we go with the WBC, which we've hopefully filled with bees. Um, what do I do with smoke? Oh, there he's. A smoker. Smoker. A right, let's give him a little huff. Let's have a look. This first frame. And we've got quite a lot of bees. We've got. Mm, we've got a bee. Oh. Uh, oh, there's a queen cup. Well, it's, looks quite a new one, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Fresh one. Yep. Don't see any in it. Oh, snake in it. Oh dear, oh dear, snake in it. Get rid of that then. Uh, oh, we've got another, another one, another queen, mm -hmm. sir. Another queen cell. Yeah. Have we seen the qu We've seen eggs, haven't we? Yeah, we've seen so eggs. We haven't seen the queen yet. Was she marked? She is, isn't she? Yeah, I'm pretty sure she... Yeah, so yeah. she was. Yes, mm. definitely. And there's another queen cup on that side as well. Interesting. Uh, nothing in that one. And... Another one there. That one there. Yeah, nothing in that one. So it's in the Queen. No. She's quite brightly marked, isn't she? Mm, I think so. Uh, all we can do is... Unless you want to go back through me. Well, we have to assume that she's in there because we saw eggs. Mm. Right. So, so that's that one done. That's that one. So that's our WBC. They're looking okay. And uh, pop still, them back. still got a bit of work to do with the old foundation comb building, but they're uh, getting there. Yeah, no sign of disease. No, happy no. bees, aren't they? Pretty happy bees. Probably don't even need the feeder now, do they? No. Well, I mean, if. Ugh, I don't know. I mean. It's hard to tell. I suppose not. we could keep feeding them until they've drawn all those cones to the bottom, I suppose. Mm. I mean, it's not because there's not enough bees in there at the moment, it's because they're just not doing it yeah. for some reason. Um, the thing is, if we feed them, then because of the Truffle axis that everybody gets a share of the food, then the queen gets fed, yeah, which encourages her to lay eggs. So she'll be wanting, she'll be demanding space to lay eggs. So, and the bees themselves will be all be feeding, so they'll all be um, in a state where they can produce wax and do comb building. So, I think maybe we better just feed them a little bit, you know, maybe a, a couple of liters a, a time. Mm. Um, until they finished off all the cones to the bottom. Yeah. Um, and they're not going to, you know, I mean, if they store it in the brood nest, then it's going to be their food rather than going into a super and, and adulterating honey. So it's, I think, yes, perhaps we should leave the feeder on and, and feed them um, until they've finished the comb building really because I think the I think the main flow is either finished or pretty nearly finished now. Right. Polystyrene National Pine. National. Which is all lovely and painted thanks to Ernest Weller. We thought or we felt there were enough bees that we might give them a chance were they put in stores in the brood yeah there's a lot of stores in the brood box um, so. and we rather hope that if we gave them space with a 
a super they might uh, use the, the super to put the stores in rather than putting it all in the brood chamber whether it will work or not of course is well yes a matter of conjecture at the moment yeah, they put a little bit in there yeah. look look at that there's a bit of, bit of nectar coming in and, and on that side and that side more on that side so there's some of this could be what they're moving up which is what we want them to do because if there's too much honey in the the brood that leaves very little space for the queen and then they can become honey bound. Um, that one feels quite heavy, there's a lot of stores in that one. Mmm, there is. Uh, it? Yeah, there's a lot of stores in that one. Um, and it's a new frame so I'm not going to tip it up or anything but there is a little bit of emerging brood still left in there. Um, I don't know, I mean if, if we were desperate for the honey then we might take an uncapping fork and scrape the cappings off some of that f stores. So you mentioned about the uncapping fork, so if, if one uncaps the honey on those frames, does that encourage them to move it? Yeah, because they will, they will lap it up. Um, yeah. They, you know, depending on the circumstances and the position, they prob maybe won't take it all out of every frame. But it does mean that they then you've got bees that are full of honey basically and they have to do they've got to do something with it because mm. they can't feed it to the babies because it's too concentrated in sugar so they will then have to unload it somewhere else and hopefully they'll unload it in the supers but they'll also pass it around the hive and uh, encourage other bees to to uh, be full and, and and produce wax which could help with the with the drawing of the frames in the super as well because you know they then think oh hell we haven't got anywhere to put it let's we'll have to we'll have to draw combs above the the brood nest and uh, yeah and then we can put it in there just seen the queen right just seen the queen I thought yeah there she is she's in this can't really see her very well Oh, yeah. She's just in here. I don't know if she's showing up on the camera or not, because it's... There's, our, there's Her Majesty with her retinue. They're all tending to her and making sure she's all right and doing her stuff. So when you've got new frames like this, then if you stand them on end like this, then it's it works, they won't fall out, hopefully. Um, but you can't really, it would be unwise, let's put it that way, to hold it horizontally to have a look into the bottom of the cell. So I think that's just all stores. So I'm just gonna, just gonna whack it back in, really. So when, it's, when it's all brand new, um, mm. it's just wax, basically. And then after it's been, after it's been bred in a few times, then it's wax lined with silk, which as we all know is among the strongest substances kicking about the place. Mm. And so it suddenly goes from being a really sort of soft and malleable um, substance to being something that's more akin to, you know, what, glass reinforced plastic or glass fibre as it used to be called or... Mm. Um, carbon fibre. Carbon fibre even. Um, so where's the silk? Is that the silk from...? That's the silk from the cocoons because the, the larvae actually spin themselves a, a cocoon of silk inside the cell when they pupate. Oh. Um, it's not as extensive as, for instance, a silk moth cocoon. Mm. Um, but it is there and a lot of it is left when the larvae has pupated and, and emerged. Right. And uh, so it, it gives strength to the, to the hexagonal cell structure. Mm. Which is already very so, efficient. So, I mean, if I, I'm, at the moment, I've got a lot of old, old uh, combs that I'm cutting up and putting in plastic bags to put in my uh, 
solar ex wax extractor. Yeah. And uh, particularly the drone ones. Um, what I do is I put I put the I fill the thing up as much as I can, and then I put it on the floor and tread on it to flatten all the wax out. So it's you know no longer hexagonal holes. It's it's now flat sheets of, of wax and stuff. Mm. And uh, particularly the drone ones, it takes a lot of treading on to get it anything near flat. Really, yeah. Um, because they've they've. You know, the, the cell walls have, have all been reinforced with with silk and uh, propolis and a certain amount of excrement, of course, because, mm. as we all know, those of us that, uh, that, that know this stuff, the uh, lava cannot evacuate its waste products until it's in its last stage of development. So, because the four gut is not connected to the hind gut and the rectum until the last stage of its development so it, it becomes the last stage of the larva and then it evacuates all its waste products and then it spins a cocoon and pupates so the cocoon is, is the, the silk is going on to um, a mass of sort of semi-liquid waste which then dries out and becomes well you know silk reinforced <laughs> fiberboard or yeah. something along those lines so it's you know it's quite Quite strong. Anyway, there we go, and that was a frame with both sides with a lot of emerging brood on it. Um, so you've had what? Six, uh, that's frames? six frames of brood. Yeah. And a couple with mostly stores. Come on, girls. <laughs> I need me nappy cream. My gloves are getting sticky. More brood, looks like it. Whole sheet of sealed brood on that side. Only one's missing where the wires are on the on the frame. Yeah. Um, in this last month's or this month's bee craft, there's a chap that says this is because they're not contrary to popular fiction. <laughs> Foundation makers are not using stainless steel wire, they're using plated steel wire, which is why sometimes it goes rusty. Oh, right. And if it were stainless steel, we wouldn't have this business where they um, leave the things out, because according to this fella, mm. the fact that you've got um, different metals together in an acid environment means that there's a small electric charge being formed by the electrolysis on the wires and the honey or nectar whatever it is that's that's in there yeah um, and that puts the queen off laying in those cells that's whether he's right or not I don't know but I mean, it is true that they very often I've noticed don't lay in all of those cells to start with, but then after they've been in there for a cycle or two, mm. um, they seem to get over the aversion. Do you think that's because they become more insulated and buried in Yeah, I think it material. could be. Um, because you know they, they do they do put other things in those cells, so if it's if it's nectar or pollen then uh, then it's going to cover up the the wires. Oh, Roger's cleaning his hive tool there, as we do between the inspections, so we don't. Well, gets rid of some of the gunk, doesn't it? But it also is good practice. So we come to our Cedar National hive with two supers and a 
deep brood, 14 by 12. Well, we've got the top super is fairly crammed with bees and pretty full of stores and nice new wax in nice new frames. It is. Um, have a we'll look at one. Drag one out just to show our adoring fan. <laughs> don't, you don't get carried away there. And oh, oh. See, we might have one more than one. <laughs> Our adoring fans, uh, maybe. <laughs> oh, look at that. So, there we go. That's a frame. That is a frame of honey, isn't it? Nearly it's filled with honey and capped. So, it's quite... It's, it's quite, quite good. good. Yeah, it's good. And you're back with the cloths. And the cover cloths. So these are just, as far as I know, they're just tea towels. Yeah. But they have a nice bumblebee motif on them, so there you go. Yeah. Very ecologically sound. Indeed. So we spread a cloth over there, and we get ready with that one. Right, so this keeps the bees in, keeps the wasps out. I mean, I don't think there are many wasps about just at the moment, but in two weeks time, there'll be like bees around a honey pot, I should think. Mm, be a real nuisance. Or even wasps around a beehive. Nothing impossible to see here. Um, I want to go in the sun, don't you? Yeah, go in the sun, Rog. Makes a huge difference to the visibility in these cells. I bet. Uh, well, I'm not seeing any eggs. No. Anyway, there we go. Yep. Hang on. Uh, that is quite close to emerging there because you can see particularly. Or oh, the bottom area. Isn't towards it? the bottom area, it's very grey. There's one just coming out there. Look opened up it's made a little hole in the cell top. Any eggs in there? Uh, I'll have to go over go in the sun, the sun again. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Uh, not see any. Hmm. on that side either. Hmm, okay. Or any, any actual larvae. Right, okay, so we are becoming increasingly suspicious of this lot. Hmm. Oh, I'll let you, I'll wait until you see it, mm -hmm. Roger. <laughs> right, okay. There's something to see, is that? And turning down, we've got quite a well advanced queen cell there. Um, and this week so far, we haven't seen anything to suggest she's still there so far. To suggest that she's still there. I know, although the queen cell is not capped yet, so. There's a chance. There's a chance she's still there, but if they're that determined to get rid of her, which they seem to be, um, do we want to force them to try and keep her or not? I don't know. I mean, they're, they're not the best bees in the world anyway. Um, no, there's a starting to come for me a little bit now. So maybe we should allow them to kind of accept the inevitable and maybe not produce a new queen from their stock, but put a frame of eggs in from a much nicer colony and let them produce a, a queen from that. Um, I don't know, I mean, they, they seem, they keep making queen cells. They're pretty determined that, that, that there's something going on here. Whether it's um, to a supersede or whether it's to a swarm. I it might on. just be a, if, well, if that's the only cell, then it's gonna be a supersedure at, at worst. Um, but we don't really want to propagate these sort of nervy bees. So, as I say, maybe we should take that one out and 
put a frame of eggs from a an, an much nicer colony in and hope they Do make you think it. they'd rear the one that's in the other, the other nuke box or uh, destroy it? It's a risk, isn't it? It's a risk because it's sealed already. I mean, mm. if we put a sealed one in there, then they might just swarm. Yeah. Um, because we haven't seen the queen, have we? We haven't seen the queen yet. Um, I think I'm kind of tempted to say that we should just, just, if we can find the queen, mm. kill her. Yeah. And then they won't swarm, so we keep all our bees. Yeah. And then we've still got a week or so to do with that queen cell if we if we decide to change it or change it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that that's going to be our best bet really because we don't want to. There's no, there's absolutely no way we're going to put this queen should we find her into a nuke box and have another nucleus to go through every week. Well, there's a large amount of pollen in that one. On this side. A little bit of brood here and there. Ooh, we've got quite a few. Now we've got a sting in the microphone again. Yeah, we've well, suddenly got uh, the whole way. proceedings. Now you've got a queen cell that's just about to be sealed. So, we'll go back, we'll take that queen cell out. Take the whole frame out actually because you know no brood on it other than that mm. one queen cell. And uh, put a frame in for a different, a nicer colony. And then they have the options of producing the queen cells from nice eggs, nice queen. Uh, queen cells from a nervy lot mm. and uh, and we'll have the option of killing what we don't want basically yeah, she came on that frame especially to, to lay an egg in that in that queen cell look. Nothing else. No, not a bean, not a thing. <laughs> not on that side either. Look at that. Look at this. Queen cup, queen cup, drone, 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 drone. queen cup. Queen cup, queen cup. I think they wanted to put some queen cups on that one. I think they did. So, yeah. Right, okay. Get off. Go on. Get off. Right. So, we tear out the queen cell. And. Uh, well, it's basically one of those, isn't it? Um, uh, oh, God, it's complicated. It's everyone we go for. Let's go for the WBC because, after all, we're only young once. A lot of seal brood. Mm. And on that side, we've got a lot of eggs. Right, so that's a... A suitable frame. So we take this one and put it in the other one. And before we go, oh no, I'll, I'll just put it down there, which gives the bees a chance to go back home. It's done it. So we've got our drawing pin in the frame of eggs that we've just donated. Yep. We've just donated. That other hive has just donated. Yep. Again, if you've got any problems with disease, it's not something to do, but we haven't got any diseases. 
So we're complete, we're done. All right, yep. sloshing all the stuff everywhere. Mm. Uh, Anything you'd like to say to our um, Not really. Um, it's a bit disappointing that the wooden national is appears determined to requeen itself yeah. again. But uh, other than that, it's all pretty good and yeah. fairly sensible, I think. We'll see you all next week then. Oh. Say goodbye, Roger. Bye bye, Roger. <laughs>